Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video I'll be doing a quick unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S24 and giving you a quick hands-on review as well. Now in India this phone is launched in two variants, base variant is priced at 80,000 rupees for 8 GB of RAM and 256 GB of storage. Next variant is priced at 90,000 rupees and it comes with 8 GB of RAM and 512 GB of storage. So just for additional storage you have to pay 10,000 more. Besides that, as usual, Samsung has offered a lot of interesting offers. You get instant 5000 rupees discount, 5000 extra bonus discount if you are doing an exchange of an older Samsung device. I guess it's a Samsung device. Anyway, there are a lot more offers, no cost TMIs and a lot more benefits as well. Anyway, back to the phone. This phone is available in three colors, amber yellow, cobalt violet and onyx black. There are also two online exclusive colors, that's jade green and sapphire blue. We have the base variant with 256GB of storage in the amber yellow color. Now first let's look at the unboxing. But before that here's the box. It's pretty small, it's pretty tiny I say. Especially considering the price, you won't even get a charger. Now let's unbox it. Before that on the front we have a quick preview of the phone followed by Galaxy S24. On the back side we have some more specifications, mainly pricing, barcode and so on. Now first let's unbox it. Here's the phone. Let me just put that aside. And in the top lid we have another smaller box. There's some documentation, SIM card ejector tool and finally a USB. USB Type-C to Type-C cable. And that's all we get inside the box. Now let's have a physical overview. On the back side, this phone comes with a glass panel with a satin finish and this is how the yellow color looks like. Towards the top we have the camera module with a 50 megapixel primary camera with f1.8 aperture with 2x optical zoom with optical image stabilization followed by a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom with optical image stabilization and finally a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with 120 degree field of view. Beside that we have the flash and below that we have the Samsung branding. On the front we have a completely flush display, there is no curve, it's completely flat just like an iPhone with slim bezels all around and a notch at the top. Inside the notch we have a 12 megapixel front facing camera. Now coming to the display, the Samsung S24 comes with a 6.2 inch dynamic AMOLED display with Full HD Plus resolution, 120Hz screen refresh rate with a peak brightness of 2600 nits. It's obviously HDR10 plus supported and for additional protection, the glass comes with a Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 which is different from the Corning Gorilla Glass armor seen on the S24 Ultra. Now for the sides, unlike the previous S23, this phone comes with completely flat sides just like the iPhone and it's made of aluminium. Only the S24 Ultra comes with a titanium build whereas the S24 and the S24 Plus comes with a regular aluminium build. Now on the right side we have the volume and power buttons which have a nice clicky feel to them. They are made of metal I guess and they are sufficiently elevated as well. On the top we have two microphones. On the left side it's completely plain. And finally at the bottom we have the SIM card tray housing two nano SIM slots. There is no SD card option. That's followed by the primary microphone, USB Type-C charging port and the speaker grill. Now this phone has a thickness of 7.6mm and weighs 167 grams. It also has IP68 water and dust resistance. Now initial impressions, in hand this phone feels pretty comfortable to hold. It's not too big, it's not too small, it fits pretty comfortably. In fact you can use this phone single handedly from the bottom to the top if you have slightly bigger hands like mine. Anyway, the weight distribution has been done excellently and the weight itself is not too heavy so phone feels pretty lightweight in hand. In hand feel of the phone is really really good like the flat sides definitely make a huge difference from the previous S23 which had a curved side. And because of the completely flat display now the S24 looks much more similar to the iPhone purely in terms of design and build and that too makes it a bit more premium and I personally like how the iPhones were built way back in iPhone 4 which also had a pretty similar build. So now even the Samsung S24 has a pretty similar build and I really love it. And because of the smaller form factor it's actually much more easy to use for people who want a smaller sized phone and if you look in the market it's actually the only flagship phone which has a smaller form factor. So that's definitely a huge plus. Now when it comes to performance it comes with the Samsung's Exynos 2400 processor with Eclipse 940 GPU. It's a 10 core processor with 8 GB LPDDR5X RAM and up to 512 GB of UFS 4.0 storage. In India, Samsung S24 and the S24 Plus come with the Exynos processor while the S24 Ultra comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor. So this is going to be a major difference between both phones. And the difference isn't just in the performance numbers or the brand name. There's actually a huge difference which I'll talk about it later. When it comes to battery, it comes with a smaller 4000mAh battery, supports fast charging up to 25 watts. It also supports wireless charging but only up to 15 watts. It also has reverse wireless charging up to 4.5 watts. 
Now these are all the sensors that are supported on this phone. Nothing's missing. You basically have everything, but it doesn't come with an infrared blaster. But we do have NFC and you can make contactless payments using your phone without any issues. Now this is how the phone looks once we turn it on and set it up. This is the home screen. This is app draw. Now here's the notification area and this is the settings page. Now here's the about page. This phone is running One UI version 6.1. It's based on Android 14. And as of right now, it has a January security patch. We will be getting the February security patch pretty soon. With that said, this phone will be getting seven years of OS updates and security patches, which is in line with what Google is offering for Pixel. Now this seven years of OS updates is definitely a huge commitment by Samsung for its customers. And it's definitely a pretty good thing for its users because you don't have to worry about security issues for the next seven years, which is actually pretty similar to what iPhone users have been enjoying for quite a while now. Now coming to the storage section, out of that 256 gigabytes of storage, we get about 238 gigabytes of space for our user apps and user data. And out of that 8 gigabytes of RAM, we get 4.1 gigabyte of RAM free right out of the box. Now this is a camera interface. By default, we have the photo mode and we have quick toggles to switch between the wide angle camera, 1x and 3x zoom. On the top, we got options for filters, motion photo and 50MP mode. On the left side, we have portrait mode. On the right side, we have video mode and mode section. In the mode section, we have all these features like pro mode, pro video, night mode, food mode and so on. And we have a similar interface for the front camera as well. When you open the front camera for the first time, it'll ask you to choose between the color tones, like you want your selfies to be slightly warmer or have a more natural color. You can choose it there. Now these are some sample shots. I'll make a dedicated video for the camera review and talking about all the camera features. So check out those videos. For now, just look at how good the photos are. I must say cameras are definitely pretty impressive, especially the primary camera takes great shots, especially in low lighting conditions. It does a really good job. I didn't talk about any AI features till now. That's for a reason. I'll talk about all of them at once at the later part. Now for the speakers, this phone comes with dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos and they sound really, really good. Like I've seen many phones with stereo speakers ranging from 15,000 all the way up to 50,000 or 60,000 like the OnePlus 12 or the iQ 12. They all have dual stereo speakers. They say they have Dolby Atmos, but those speakers sound way different from the S24. Like when you listen to audio from the S24, it's as if you're having a surround sound experience. You'll have a much more immersive experience. Now, this is something I can't show you on a video. I would suggest you to go to a store and check it out in person. Like the audio quality and the experience, especially that surround sound experience you'd get on the S24 is really phenomenal. And I checked later that Dolby it was not even turned on. So the effect comes directly from the speakers itself. Like it's an inbuilt feature of the S24. You should definitely check it out. And if you're someone who watches a lot of videos directly on the speakers without using any wireless earbuds, then you'll love the speakers a lot more. Now coming to security, this phone has fingerprint scanner and you also have the face and lock feature. They both work pretty well. Fingerprint scanner's position has been moved slightly up, I guess. Anyway, it's still pretty easy to reach with the thumb and unlocking speeds are pretty fast. You almost instantly unlock the phone. Face unlock also works pretty well. In good lighting conditions, even in low lighting conditions, it almost instantly unlocks the phone. Now as for the haptic engine, I must say it is really, really good. Like everywhere the phone vibrates when you unlock the phone when you lock it or in some applications when you even scroll you get a subtle haptic feedback like it's not too hard it's not too soft it's somewhere in between and it feels really really good now finally when it comes to connectivity it has nfc bluetooth version 5.3 usb version 3.2 gen 1 for the usb type c port it has wi-fi 6e and these are all the 5g bands that it supports now coming to the highlights this phone is all about ai features or at least that's what samsung is trying to sell so let's see what these AI features are. And before we get started, let me just caution you, no matter what you have seen in promos or other videos or in the Samsung Unpacked event, AI features are there, they work, but they are not perfect. Like most of the times it probably works, but most of the time it also fails. I'll show you a lot of examples later. So these are the AI features that Samsung has been talking a lot about. First, we have Call Assist. Now, whenever you get a call or whenever you make a call, you get to turn on this Call Assist feature. So once you click it, you get two options live translate or text call. Now, once you select live translate, you get to choose between different languages. As of now, only 15 or so languages are supported and coming to India, only Hindi and Indian English is available. So for now, for the example, I'll be selecting English and let's say the other party only knows Hindi. And this is how the call turned out to be. Hi. This call 
जा रहा है और उसका लाइव कैप्शन जोड़ा जा रहा है हाय फिक्स मी हाय किशन बोल रहा है क्या यस इज दिस डे आर यू टॉकिंग अबाउट द मूवी हां यह खबर है As you have seen it works but if you try to add any kind of accent or if you try to humor a bit it simply goes crazy. Next we have text call. In this feature instead of you speaking you can just type something on the text bar and it will convert into audio and send it back to the other side. And when the other guy responds instead of playing it on the speaker it will translate to text and give you a text information once again. Now this particular text call feature might be really useful if you're in a class or if you're in a meeting where you can't answer the call but you want to just check out what the call is about. Once again for this particular feature only English seems to be working. I didn't find it to be working with other languages. When the other guy is talked in Hindi it just didn't respond. So here's a preview of that. Next we have interpreter. Now this is another fancy feature where you just click a toggle for interpreter and it opens this application and once again you can choose between those 15 languages. Once again I'll pick English and the other guy will pick Hindi and this is how the conversation turned out. Are you from Hyderabad? I just came to Hyderabad. Kya aap Hyderabad se hai? Main abhi Hyderabad aaya hu. Ha main Hyderabad se hu. Aap kahan se ho? Kahan se aaye? Yes. I am from Hyderabad. Where did you come from? I came from Mumbai. मैं Mumbai से आया था. ठीक है क्या चाहिए आपको? What do you need? What is the nearest theater to watch the latest movie? नवीनतम फिल्म देखने के लिए निकटतम थिएटर क्या है? क्या बोल रहे हैं आप? कुछ समझ में नहीं आया. Are you speaking? You have not understood something. As you have seen interpreter works but once again it's not perfect. Next we have chat assist or you can say note assist. Anyway these two features work with text. First I'll show you chat assist. Now whenever you are chatting with your friend on messages app, WhatsApp, Telegram or any application basically you just click on an empty text field it opens up the Samsung keyboard. You have a dedicated button over there for chat assist. Write whatever you want and then click chat assist and you get additional options. From here you can change the writing style. You can make it look more professional, social, personal, professional. I guess I already covered that. You can emojify. You can make it a bit more polite. So you can basically change the style in which you have written the text. After that, you can also check for spelling mistakes and grammar. Next, we can do the similar thing even on the S Note application. Now, S Note might not be pretty useful on S24 and S24 Plus as they don't have an S Pen, but you can use it for taking notes. Now, once again, you open the S Note application. You have a button for generate AI. Just click on it. You get similar options. You can change the writing style. You can check for spellings and grammar. And finally, you can also add header files and add bullet points to the already written text. So, this is all about the chat assist. And next we have a translation tool as well built into the keyboard. Once again, you open any chat application, write whatever you want, and then click the translate button. And you can select the language, and it will translate the text into that language. So this is all about the chat assist. Now Samsung has also collaborated with Google and came up with a new feature called Circle to Search. Once again, after you enable this feature, you just press the home button. It'll take a screenshot of the screen, and then you can circle anywhere, and then your phone will search for it using Google's image search. It definitely looked pretty interesting, but you can do pretty similar stuff on other Android phones as well. Like no matter what you're doing, just trigger Google Assistant, and there's a Google Lens icon. Click on it, and now instead of circling on anything, you can just tap on it, and it'll do pretty much the similar stuff. Probably it'll do a much better job. on a Samsung phone but if you're looking for similar results other phones can do the same anyway that circle to search on S24 now that's not the end we still have more interesting and in fact more useful features when it comes to photo editing just open up the gallery application and from here you can do a lot of cool stuff select any photo click on a subject let it be a person or a dog just do a long press and then you can select that subject and share it as an image or share it as a sticker this is definitely a pretty useful feature and works very intuitively next we have photo assist or generative ai once again select any photo there's a button over there just click it to start generative ai now from here you can do a lot of crazy stuff you can select any object and move it around and the rest of the space is automatically filled by samsung ai We also have object eraser which can completely erase objects and we can move objects from one position to other where the empty place is being filled by Samsung's generative fill. 
And finally, while you're watching a video, you can long press on the screen to slow down the motion. Once again, Samsung will use generative AI to create additional frames to slow down the footage. This can be useful if you're into sports or if you have a dog running around. Now, all the features that I've talked about use generative AI. And for some parts, it sends your data from your phone to Google servers or Samsung servers and gets back the results. Now, if you're someone who's concerned about your privacy, you don't want your personal information to be shared with anyone. There's a toggle for that in the settings. You can just enable it so that all the generative AI stuff happens only on your phone. Now doing this will improve your privacy, but the AI results might not be that perfect. Next, we have a feature called Transcript Assist. Now, all this happens in the voice recorder application from Samsung. Now, firstly, using this application, you can record any voice. Let's say you're having a meeting and you just recorded the voice. Using the transcribe feature, you can transcribe all the audio to text, and then you can also ask it to summarize. Once again, this feature works, but it's not that perfect. Like you can see these examples. Now, besides all this, we also got a new feature for always on display. Earlier, we just had a blank display and just date and time, but now we can also have wallpaper, just like on the iPhones. Besides that, we can also add widgets to it and the new widgets also look pretty cool. And I also forgot to mention that Samsung has added a new feature for wallpapers, just like the Pixel phones, where you can use generative AI to create your own wallpapers. Like you already have a fixed sentence, but you can change few words to generate a wallpaper according to your preference. This is another cool feature where Samsung has collaborated with Google and it really works. Okay, that's all the good part or the basic information that you need to know about the S24. Now let's talk about the bad part. Now all the features are based on generative AI. They look super cool. They look great in demonstrations and videos you've seen online, but they're not perfect. Like when you're doing a live translate call, things might go wrong. Like if you use English words while talking in Hindi, which we all do, gets translated in a weird way. It doesn't understand humor. So it literally translates sentence to sentence. So there might be a miscommunication. And when it comes to interpreter, it's a pretty cool implementation, but you can probably find applications doing the same in Play Store. Next, we have transcript assist in the voice recorder feature. Once again, super cool feature, but it's not perfect. If you use a Hindi voice recording, once again, which uses English words in between, it makes a lot of mistakes. Now, if you talk about the chat assist features, it's definitely pretty useful. But once again, it can be accomplished with the third party keyboard application, probably not maybe now, but maybe in six months, there might be some other keyboard application like Swift key or Google's on Gboard, which can offer you similar feature. So that's why even though these AI features were impressive, they have their own faults. Now, when it comes to photo editing features or photo assist, once again, they are super cool, but they're not perfect either. But it's super handy to have these features just at a click of a button. Like instead of editing these photos in a Photoshop or something else, anyone, even my parents can just do small edits with just a click of a button. And that's definitely super handy. But as I've told you, it's not super perfect. Anyone with a bit of discerning eye can check out all the mistakes. So all these AI features that Samsung has been bragging about are basically just bragging words. That's all. So basically the new S24 isn't that different from the last year's S23 with a pretty good build, upgraded cameras and fancy new AI features. That's all. There have been rumors about Samsung making these AI features a subscription from 2025 or by the end of 2025, but I don't think that's going to happen. Like by then all these AI features are going to be the norm. S24 is definitely a pretty good phone. It's got an amazing build, pretty cool AI features to show off. Yes, I said show off, not practically very usable, but still they are very good to show off, especially those photo editing features are pretty useful, I would say. And besides that, you also have great cameras, but that's it. Besides that, it has heating issues, pretty severe heating issues, I would say. So you better check out my gaming review for more information on that. So to conclude, S24 is definitely a pretty good phone, but because of the heating issues, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're really interested in buying a Samsung flagship, spend a little more, get the S24 Ultra instead, which comes with a Snapdragon processor where you might not have any heating issues. 
For now at least, I'll say don't go for the S24 or the S24 Plus which come with the Exynos processor. As for the AI features, they're pretty good, but don't buy an S24 or S24 Plus for those AI features, especially the call assist features or the transcribe features. They're not perfect enough. Photo editing features or the cameras are definitely good. So guys, what do you think about the new S24? Do you like it? Do you want to buy it for the AI features or just for the looks or the cameras? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you have any questions about the phone, comment below this video or any of our latest videos, we'll get back to you immediately. With that said, if you like our video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and do subscribe to our channel. With that said, see you next time. Bye-bye.